Hello guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. You could be driving. Honda has won more U.S. News and World Report awards than any other brand in the last decade. And now you can add another one to the list, being named the best car brand of 2022. Come get your Honda today at Louisiana's number one Honda dealer, Team Honda on Segan Lane. No one can stop me when I taste the feeling Nothing could ever bring me down Nothing, nothing could ever bring me down Taste the feeling Hello and welcome as we start today's edition of the Clarence Buzz Show. Here's hoping all is well with you and yours in your world since the last opportunity we had at the end of last week to spend some time with you and yours. We start today's show with Louisiana news and Governor John Bell Edwards in his State of the State address this week saying, quote, on March 11, 2020, I signed a public health emergency for COVID-19. And while it changed to reflect the ebb and flow of the pandemic, it has remained in effect ever since. This Wednesday, the order expires. And after 24 months, I will not be renewing it. This decision was not made lightly. I've met with GOSEP, the Department of Health, Louisiana National Guard, Division of Administration, to ensure that there will be no federal aid repercussions or other adverse consequences from not renewing the proclamation. I want to be clear that just because the proclamation is expiring does not mean COVID is over. If the circumstances call for it, I will not hesitate to declare another emergency. God willing, we will never have to see such a difficult, such difficult mitigation measures in our state again. Thankfully, at this time, we are no longer in a crisis. I don't know what the future holds, but I do know that we're in a much better place today than we were two years ago. It is part of a trend that we're seeing all across the country, particularly in blue states. Now, I know what you're saying. Well, you know, midterm elections are right around the corner. Democrats don't want to have to face the music uh, from all the stuff that they've drummed up. And you would be right in that regard. As a matter of fact, recent poll from INI TIP, T-I-P-P, shows 65% of our fellow Americans believe that it is politics and not science that drives lockdown measures, masks, mandates, vaccine mandates, et cetera, et cetera. Democrats believe that to the tune of 58%. Independents believe that it's more political than science driven by 65%. And Republicans think it's more political than science by 75%. Now, I will leave to you to decide exactly what percentage you think is political and how much is scientific. What is bothersome about all of this, y'all, is the damage that's been done to the trust in American institutions that 
up until now, we had no problem believing pretty much anything they told us. The Centers for Disease Control, the World Health Organization, and of course, Dr. Anthony Fauci, have lost so much credibility among the American people that God forbid we find ourselves going through this again down the road. Americans are not going to want to hear what these institutions have to say. And you know full well that it is due in large part to the flip-flopping, the hiding of information, and of course, the science changing from day to day, week to week, month to month. It is something that the American people deserve better on. And as is typically the case with things that are political, expected to change more and more with every passing day, particularly as we get closer to election time. In other Louisiana news, yet another horrifically deadly violent weekend in Baton Rouge. If you have not been paying attention you may have arrived at a point where you don't recognize the capital region anymore. I actually lost count this past weekend of the number of horrific murders in the capital city. Everything from a six-month pregnant mother and her two-year-old child and her unborn baby murdered. Now, you can make the argument that, according to forensics, this darling mother, her unborn baby, and her two-year-old were killed up to a week ago. The bodies were only recovered, discovered this weekend. But another case, gentlemen, and I use that term loosely, playing with the gun, shoots and kills accidentally. Another pregnant mother and her unborn child. A three-year-old, unsupervised, finds an illegal handgun in the company of a convicted felon and then shoots himself in the head. And of course, the other run of the mill assorted crimes of violence carried out with a firearm. Y'all, at what point do we decide to stand up and be better than this? You know, I found it particularly interesting, ironic, and very, very telling. And maybe I just missed it. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. But I found it oddly troubling that the mention of crime and the explosion thereof, particularly in the community of people of color, was oddly absent from Governor John Bell Edwards' State of the State address. I saw just last night the second in command of the Louisiana Legislative Black Caucus stopped in a local TV station to grant an interview about the upcoming session and said the two priorities of the Legislative Black Caucus will be infrastructure and police reform. No mention of this horrific rate of deadly violence all across our state. 
And when you have individuals who cloak themselves under the banner of the legislative black caucus, and they don't say anything about what's happening in the communities they represent. They don't demand action from the governor. They don't marshal resources, legislative, governmental, faith-based, NGOs, what have you. It should tell you just how much these folks actually care. You know what's ironic here? The number of individuals in the Louisiana Legislative Black Caucus who have constituents who've lost loved ones is probably too many to count. And yet, they'll talk about infrastructure, they'll talk about criminal justice reform, they'll talk about Governor John Bell Edwards ending the COVID emergency order, but nothing is being said about all these young black men and women who continue to be murdered every single day. It's gotten to the point now where, and I follow this for a living, so I can only imagine what the mindset must be like for just casual news observers, when you lose count of how many people just on the weekend are murdered, there is something seriously wrong here, guys and girls. And to think those we have elected to represent us at the highest level in our state continue to ignore, continue to be silent, continue to not have any suggestions on how to rein this in is more an indictment of us than it is of them. Because we elect them and we allow them to get away with this sort of nonsense, never once holding them accountable. I can only hope that you and yours will make it through the next week and the next weekend without having to plan a funeral. Just saying. Just saying. First break of today's show. When we come back, it's Tuesday, Second segment, you know what that means. Yep, time for another edition of Now That's Just Stupid. That's next when we continue today's edition of the Clarence Bug Show only on the Pelican. Stay close. Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats. Taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances, your dependable independent. Depend on us for service, for selection, for price. Get huge Whirlpool savings. Shop now and save on Whirlpool appliances throughout the store. Plus, experience our price match guarantee and ask about special financing. You can depend on the know-how of people who live appliances every day. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances, your dependable independent with nationwide buying power. I owed the IRS $10,000. The IRS garnished my wages. They put a lien on my house. I'm self-employed and didn't report all my income. They claim I owe a lot more than I do. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency in the world. They do not give up until you pay. 
I couldn't sleep. We were being audited. I called Tax Solutions Now, and a great big weight was lifted off my shoulders. I called Tax Solutions Now, and they got the IRS off my back. Tax Solutions Now had my wage garnishment lifted in 48 hours. Tax Solutions Now can get you help. Our agents know the rules, can stop the pain, and get you the best deal. Tax Solutions Now saved my business. I qualified for the Fresh Start program. I paid less than I owed. We connect you with a team of former IRS agents and tax professionals who get the IRS off your back. Time is running out. Call Tax Solutions now. Call 800-778-4345. 800-778-4345. The Mazda CX-30. Named an IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus. Perfect for the journey ahead. Start your journey in a new Mazda CX-30. Right here at Team Mazda on Airline. Hi gang, Clarence Bugs here, inviting you to come by Old School Barbecue, 10655 Corsi Boulevard, where we tape the show live every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 11 o'clock. Come by and feast on news, sports, current events, love of God and country, and lots of common sense, along with some of the best barbecue anywhere on the planet. 10655 Corsi Boulevard, Old School Barbecue, home of the Clarence Bugs Show. Live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club, a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. Tuesday, <laughs> and the second segment of the show, which means it is time for another edition of, now that's just stupid, we're not talking ordinary, run-of-the-mill, garden variety stupid, which obviously we were taught early in school, you spell S-T-U-P-I-D. This, my friends, Thank you, Marty, is an entirely different level, as in S-T-O-O-P-I-D. We start, <laughs> you know, after a while, this stuff just becomes so predictable. We start with President Joe Biden. Last week, the president was in Philadelphia making an address, and once again, White House talking points, President Joe Biden took issue with the American people and their perception of what is going on in this country. Obviously, you've been to the gas station, you've been to the grocery store, you've been to department stores, you know everything that you can buy, inflation ravaging your wallet. You know this. So the president apparently reached his point last week when he said to the media, quote, I'm sick of this stuff. The American people think the reason for inflation is the government spending more money. Simply not true. Democrats didn't cause this problem. Vladimir Putin did. <laughs> now, at some point, you have to ask yourself, does he really believe this? Is he really this dense? Or does he think we're that stupid? You'll notice the media now has picked up the talking points from the White House, and they'll tell you the same thing. Well, this is, this is, this is all Vladimir Putin's fault. 
Really? So in the nearly year-long time frame, before the Russian troop buildup, before the missiles started being lobbed into Ukraine, everything was fine. Prices were low. There was no supply chain crisis. You know, everything's hunky-dory. Really, Mr. President? Really? And, you know, it, it's, it's one thing, y'all, if you are debating something that you have some wiggle room in. But any American with any amount of sense at all saw it start from the very first day this guy took office. <laughs> and leave it to the left, and particularly the Biden-Harris administration, leave it to them to see who can one-up the other with really stupid, stupid statements. If it weren't bad enough that Joe Biden is sick of y'all thinking this is his fault when it's Putin's fault, it's COVID's fault, it's the gas company's fault, it's everybody else's fault but his. Kamala Harris then turns around and says, well, you know, <laughs> the American people told us what they wanted when they voted for us. So now they're getting it. They should be happy. So Americans, if I understand her correct, Americans wanted the highest inflation in 40 years. Americans wanted $4, $5, $6 a gallon gasoline. Americans wanted our standing in the international community shot to hell after an embarrassment of a withdrawal from Afghanistan, now trying to navigate our way through potentially the start of World War III, Americans, according to Vice President Harris, wanted two million plus people to come across the border illegally, and Americans, according to the Vice President, wanted crime to explode in unprecedented numbers. That's what y'all wanted. That's, what you, that's why you voted for us. Now you're getting what you want. Be happy. <laughs> Do you see what these people really think about you? All of this, mind you, in one year. <laughs> and you thought government couldn't do anything quickly. <laughs> you thought, man, the government, federal government moves so slow. I've never seen any group of people take this long to do anything. Well, it didn't take long for them to screw up the country, did it? Kamala Harris says, well, y'all told us what you wanted. We're just giving you what you asked for. <laughs> That's modest people. <clears throat> Finally, speaking of, not as just stupid, here it is, 2022, and once again, we find ourselves springing forward and falling back. You know, <sighs> There are a lot of things that 
you would tend to think government does not possess the wherewithal to fix. I mean, just look at the Biden-Harris administration. Illegal immigration, can't fix it. At least they can. It was fixed before they took office, but that's a different show for a different day. Exploding crime, homicide rates, can't fix it. Supply chain crisis, can't fix it. A whole litany of things that they have demonstrated they either cannot or are not willing to fix. But something as simple as settling on one freaking time. Pick one, leave it. Be done. Move on to the next issue. Twice a year, every year, lives turned upside down, productivity suffers, schedules have to be adjusted, readjusted, and re-readjusted, all for something that is woefully outdated, something that serves no useful purpose. But now that I think about it, and this, just, this thought just came to me as it was coming up and coming out, maybe that's why. Leave it to this government to screw up the things that are working well and then completely ignore stupid stuff that you could fix lickety-split. <laughs> Now you know why they coined the famous phrase, the nine scariest words you can hear. I'm from the government, and I'm here to help. Now that I think about it, <laughs> we, we should maybe be grateful they haven't tried to fix this. I mean, after all, particularly with this administration, Look how everything else has turned out that they've tried to fix. Just an observation. Just an observation. We're heading up to the bottom of the hour break. We'll get this done. But when we come back, <laughs> I want to talk about a really, 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 really bad week. But social justice, you know those folks, the social justice warriors. Oh, last week was brutal. <laughs> last week was absolutely brutal. But more than that, last week, two of arguably the most high profile social justice warriors on the planet opened up their robes and let everybody in America and the world see what fakes they really are. Justice for Juicy. We'll talk about that and more when we continue today's edition of the Clarence Bug Show only on the Pelican. Stay close. Got termites? Get Premier Pest. PremierPestServices.com Driver assistance technology comes standard on every Camry model as part of Toyota Safety Sense. Setting the standard for safety every time you're on the road, no matter the destination. Save on your Camry today at Team Toyota, I-12 at O'Neill. Hi, I'm Katie, Operation Manager here at Old School Barbecue. We're excited about all of the changes here at Old School, and we'd like to invite everyone to come out and enjoy some delicious barbecue at Old School Prices. We feature brisket, chicken, ribs, sausage, and the Boss Hog Pulled Pork Sandwich voted Best Deal in Town. We also have live music Friday and Saturday from 7 to 10 p.m. 
10655 Corsi Boulevard. We can't wait to see you. Hello guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugé, Jr., and I am a general dentist at Frugé Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we give back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. I'm Hurricane Betsy Barnes. And I'm Dr. Kay Siller with the Rocket Right Show. We are two busy blondes on the go showing off life in Louisiana. Watch us on Pelican Sports Network. And Talk 107.3 FM. Check local listings for times. Caught spiders. Premier Pest Services. Every now and then, the mask is removed, and you get to see firsthand the reality of the matter. In recent memory, social justice has become a buzz phrase in our country. Something meant to focus a spotlight on the systemic racism in America. And, of course, you have individuals that have been leading the charge in this regard. One of whom is <laughs> Dave Chappelle. You will live in infamy for this. Juicy Smollier, a.k.a. Jussie Smollett, sentenced last week to 30 months probation after serving five months in jail, pay 120 grand in restitution, and a $25,000 fine. In watching all of this unfold, this guy, in no uncertain terms, showed the entire planet what he's really all about. Prior to the sentencing, the Reverend Jesse Jackson and the actor Samuel L. Jackson wrote letters to the judge asking for leniency, saying that, well, you know, this guy has been a leading proponent for social justice, and that should carry some consideration with your sentence. You do realize this is a guy that has been preaching to us about hate. Stop hate. Hate is wrong. 
Don't hate. Stop hate. Stop hate. Stop hate. Systemic racism. Stop hate. And what did he do? He used a premeditated lie that he knew was a lie in conjunction with the media to spread his own hate. Mr. Stop Hate used a lie to perpetuate a, wait for it, hate crime. (laughs) You can't make this stuff up. The same guy preaching, stop hate, stop hate, don't hate, hate is wrong, racism equals hate, 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 hate. Use the lie to perpetuate a hate crime against millions of our fellow Americans. Meanwhile, this morning, Black Lives Matter issues a statement saying, we're calling on everybody to call the jail and say, release Jesse. (laughs) You remember when all of this first started, how the left, Democrats, and the mainstream media took every opportunity to shove this down our throats, despite the fact, mind you, that anybody with this much sense saw right through this thing from the very beginning. Black folk, y'all know I'm not lying. You know I'm not lying. We knew right up front, uh, bruh, (laughs) <laughs> this could not have happened the way you said it did. You lying, bruh. And yet, not only did the mainstream media pick the ball up and run with it, not only that, but they took every opportunity available on social media and mainstream media to cheer it on. Kamala Harris leading the way. Joe Biden tweeting not far behind. Nancy Pelosi, Black Lives Matter. Oh, they just lined up to condemn this horrible, racist, homophobic attack. Question. How many of these people have you seen since the verdict or the sentencing have come down, how many of them have you seen tweeting, wow, we got taken for a ride? How many have you seen tweet, "Um, we owe y'all an apology. This was a lie up front. And he painted an entire segment of the population, millions, because they wore MAGA hats. Remember that? And how many do you think are going to be decent enough to say, you know what, y'all? We were wrong. We hope you can forgive us, and we pledge to do better in the future. (laughs) <laughs> That's rhetorical. You know those clowns don't, don't have a shred of decency in them to do something like that. But to show you, and this is one of the reasons I have been so infatuated with politics and societal trends as they relate to politics for more than 40 years now. Every now and then, (laughs) it's true. Politics makes strange bedfellows. 
If you were to ask me six months ago, year ago, whenever, if there would ever be anything that Lori Lightfoot and I would agree on, I'd tell you, you lost your freaking mind. There's no way. There is absolutely no way Lori Lightfoot, mayor of Chicago, and I will ever agree on anything. Well, lo and behold, this goes to show you, when Lori Lightfoot abandons you, and you're black, and you're gay, and you're from Chicago, you know you've hit rock bottom. Shortly after the sentence was handed down, the esteemed Mayor Lightfoot said the following, quote, the malicious and wholly fabricated claim made by Mr. Smollett resulted in over 1,500 hours of police work that cost the city over $130,000 in police overtime. The city feels vindicated in today's ruling that he is being held accountable and that we will appropriately receive restitution for his actions. <laughs> when Lori Lightfoot bails on you, yeah, you didn't hit rock bottom, Hoss. Oh, but it gets better. That was just one of the high-profile social justice warriors. The other, who also decided, well, I can't let this guy have all the glory. I need to do something real stupid and show people what I'm really all about, too. Enter Colin Kaepernick. Yeah. <laughs> You've seen the latest, right? Colin Kaepernick, fresh off completing his documentary series on Netflix, Colin Kaepernick in black and white, fresh off that performance where he likened the NFL, the combine, to slavery. Had pictures of black men in chains on the auction block, massa, bidding on them, taking them home, separating them from their families. Right after this guy puts out this documentary series saying the NFL is akin to slavery, what does he do? He puts up a video of him working out, throwing passes, saying, I'm in the best shape of my life. I've been working out every day. Any team that wants to go to the Super Bowl, I'm here. I'm ready. <laughs> Maybe I just missed it. For whatever reason, I was out sick from school that day. I had a special extra credit project I was working on and missed the regular class that day. But do you ever remember reading about a slave that six years after escaping from the plantation went back to the plantation? Hey, uh, Massa, it's me, Colin. Uh, Y'all got any openings? Um, you need a slave? <sighs> Bro, really? You just finished making a documentary for the whole freaking planet to see. The NFL, racist, 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 racist. And now you want back in? <sighs> really? <laughs> Massa don't pay that good. Marty just said Massa must be paying pretty good. This clown wants back in.
course you know. If you had a little bit of a brain, you'd already know this clown's a joke. You'd already know it. Six years removed, hadn't played a down. And you're in the best shape of your life, and you're ready to help a team return to the Super Bowl. Hmm. I can't wait for the reporters to do their job and, and, and to ask. So, uh, Colin, if, if, um, if an NFL team picks you up, you going to stand for the anthem? Just a question. Just a question. The NFL combine is akin to slavery. Hmm. So you want to be a slave. Huh. Funny how that works, isn't it? Yep, I said the same thing. Can't say that on TV, though. <laughs> Final break of today's show. When we come back, I have proof positive, hands down, unequivocally, it's a different day. And not only that, we're in trouble, y'all. We'll get this final break of the way, out of the way. Come back, put that big old pretty pole on it, and wrap up today's edition of the Clarence Bug Show, only on the Pelican. Stay close. You can't smell it, but you can almost taste it. And whether it's for a family get-together or a game day feast, having Manda in the mix always sounds good. For three generations, their quality meats and original seasonings have made Manda a Louisiana legend and made their family sausage Louisiana's family sausage. Manda Fine Meats. The flavor says it all. Live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club, a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. Tremonti's has meat. Tremonti's has seafood. Tremonti's has much more. Tailgating and home gating platters. Huge wine and liquor selection. Beer and all the spices you need. Chairman Reserve and Wagyu Meats. Ribeye rolls, shrimp rolls, kebabs. 20 flavors of sausage for the grill. Daily lunch specials and game processing. On-site catering also available. Good meat ain't cheap and cheap meat ain't good. Visit Tremontese.com. Sometimes life is wonderful. And sometimes it's not. Cherish the good, but always be prepared for life's challenges. At Private Healthcare, we provide the peace of mind you deserve. With Private Healthcare, you'll get the coverage you want and healthcare you need. If your employer doesn't supply healthcare coverage and you don't qualify for Medicare or Medicaid, you need to give us a call right now. Private Healthcare is private health insurance for ages 65 and under with medical, dental, vision, and even prescription coverage. When life comes at you unexpectedly, you need to be ready. And health insurance is your financial safety net. Health insurance has never been so easy and affordable. If you're looking for health coverage at the best price and your annual household income is $35,000 or more, call the number on the screen now and speak with a live health care consultant. Don't wait. Get the coverage you need now. show you know I uh, have come to grips for quite some time now that the entirety of my life experience is in no way shape or form typical for most Americans growing up in a military household father serving nearly 30 years in the armed forces. It early in life became a part of me 
that what we have here is special, so very special, mind you, that there would be no greater honor than to die defending it. It's something that was a common thread among my generation, baby boomers. Regardless of what you felt about whatever societal issue was happening at the time, you understood the value of America, you understood the promise of America, you understood that there are some things greater than self and some things that are worth the ultimate sacrifice for. Now, obviously, growing up in a military household, those feelings tend to run deeper among those of us who live that experience versus those of us who haven't. I get that. But a recent Quinnipiac University poll left me deflated, angry, confused, and ultimately coming to the conclusion the liberals have done their job exceedingly well. With everything going on in Ukraine right now, Quinnipiac University polled 1,374 American adults across the country asking if a situation like Ukraine were to happen in this country, if another country decided to invade America, would you stay and fight or would you run? <laughs> Get these numbers. Break down the poll and the numbers will tell you we're in trouble, y'all. According to this poll, let me give you the overall number, and then I'll tell you where it's boosted and where it's lacking. 55%, let me rephrase that, only 55% of those polled said they would stay and fight. But when you break it down, here's what's really scary. Divided by political party, 68% of Republicans said they would stay and fight. Only 40% of Democrats said they'd stay and fight. 40% of Democrats said if this country were invaded, they'd stay and fight. 52% said they'd leave. What does that say about us? And you know, you have to wonder if 52% said if this country were invaded, I'd run away. I'd go someplace else. Number one, where are you going to go? Number two, number two, when you get there, if the country that's invading us decides to invade that country, you're going to run again? Well, no, I'd, I'd, I'd stay and fight. So you would stay and fight 
to some place else and not for this country? Listen, y'all. I cannot, over 40 years plus of broadcasting, tell you the number of polls that I've referenced. And I know what you're saying. Yeah, but Clarence, you can make a poll say pretty much whatever you want it to say. This was a simple yes or no question. If another country were to invade America, just like what's happening in Ukraine, would you stay and fight or would you run away? You know, as much as it pains me to say it, <laughs> for those who would run away, why don't you just leave now? Because we don't need you getting in the way when if the S-H-T-F happens, when the stuff hits the fan, you're useless. You would run away. You know, there's something to be said about the number of people who take their lives in their hands trying to come here and partake in the freedoms and the liberties and the bounty that we enjoy. There's something to be said about those folks. And sadly, I'm willing to bet you, and I'm not a betting man, but I'm willing to bet you more of those folks would stay and fight than the ones who were blessed to be born here. If ever you wonder just how effective these people are at turning Americans against themselves, well, now you know. Just always remember, freedoms and liberties encroached upon by government are seldom, if ever, returned intact, especially when you run away. Time's up and I got to go. We just got to be a quick one. This day, just like any other, you know what I give it to you. You're right. America, nah, we ain't perfect. But for this old boy's money, it's the best there is. And God knows there's no place else on his green earth that I'd rather be. Speaking of the good Lord, you realize he loves you. And I hope you know that I do too. Then again, ain't a doggone thing you can do about either one. We'll see you tomorrow. God bless. Love you much.